This is not just a normal mountain in the Bolivian highlands. This is a mass grave of millions. This is the Cerro Rico, the rich mountain, and it changed the whole world. Let me start telling the story in the year of 1545. The year where a Spanish prospector discovered a massive vein of silver openly exposed by time and wind right at the mountainside. That discovery led to a rush towards the Cerro Rico. The city became a prosperous center of the Spanish colonial empire. In fact, even the wealthiest city in the whole world. Before I focused on the mountain itself, I took a closer look into the colonial city center. I could still see how rich and wealthy the city once was. 80% of the whole world's silver came out of this mountain high up in the highlands of Bolivia. Until around 1700, nearly all of the silver was mined out of Cerro Rico and Potosí's wealth slowly faded. For now almost 500 years, the miners are working in Cerro Rico. Day by day, they're risking their health and their lives to get out the treasures of the mountain that in the end only make others rich. I went to Potosí to see what the work in the tunnels is really like. First I got handed proper clothing to go inside the mine. Waterproof pants, rubber boots, a helmet with a headlamp and a miner's jacket. So we just got changed in all of our clothes and this is our group for the day. <laughs> We're going in the mine in a few minutes. The miners are waiting for you with some presents. Not expensive presents, just cheap presents. Like small buckle with coca leaves. Other popular presents are also alcohol or even real sticks of dynamite. The little shops in the miners district are one of the only places on earth where it's possible for everyone to buy real explosive just at the side of the street. This mountain is woman because they ask to the mother air like this, Pachamama give me pure silver and Pachamama give me pure alcohol. And they have to do this like this, see? Equipped with everything we needed for ourselves, we left the building to go to the miners' market. There you could literally find all the gear necessary to work in the Cerro Rico. Rubber baskets, clothes, helmets, shovels, wagons, everything they want to use in the mine. We are in the miners' market, okay? And for the miners it's very important to eat lunch if they want to work in the mines, okay? If you don't like to eat, but you, in Boca, you can work for two hours in the mines, it's very hard work. And after the work, you need to clean, you need to clean your lungs with a banana juice or with milk. Now this area is miners' area, and the miners are living here around. Now things quickly became pretty serious, and during our way up the mountain, I learned more about how it became the anthill it is today. When the Spanish newcomers arrived, they didn't yet know how to separate the silver ore from the rock, but the native people of the region, the Quechua, did. The solution was simple: fire and heat made the silver melt, and so mineable. Soon after, an armada of fires decorated the Cerro Rico day and night and for the next 20 years, the mining increased further and further until nearly all the exposed silver veins were fully exploited and shipped to Spain. But the Spanish king, Philip II, was already highly dependent on the flow of silver coming from the Cerro Rico to pay his armada and conquests. More was needed urgently. To increase the flow of this precious resource again, the king sent one of his closest confiants, Francisco Toledo, to Potosí to take care of this issue. His arrival in the mid-1560s marks the beginning of the hell below the ground. And that's how the first tunnels emerged deep inside the mountain along precious veins of silver. Over the next 500 years, millions of nativos were forced to work on the ground under the harshest conditions imaginable. With what felt like just the blink of an eye, we suddenly stood right in front of the entrance. We were about to enter the Candelaria mine, which was built in the 17th century at the peak of the colonial age and is still active until today. Exciting. Let's go in the mine. walking further and further into the mine. This is serious. <laughs> Every few minutes there were miners passing by in a narrow tunnel with huge carts filled with stones high in minerals. What the heck, so we just had to hide here to let the mining carts and the miners pass by. This is not a museum. This is real people working here. Wow. And each one of these were approximately 1000 kg of material and they sometimes have to push them out more than one kilometer with only their hands. Just to go back in after and fill it up again.
Wow. Wow. That's super narrow. And in the colonial time, every day you walk 80,000 indigenous, and they use this word, mitayos. Okay? The helmet has llama leather. Fix start the cooperative system because they have to organize it by socios, cooperatives, are working 36 cooperatives in this mountain. We have to split the money together, we are socios. Hate for this area, we rent, we pay to the government. But what that actually means is highly dangerous. It means the mining in the whole mountain happens without any source of control. There are no engineers that make sure the miners work in a safe area. The only people in charge of that are the miners themselves. And they often neither have the education nor the experience to decide that wisely and go off at the rocks with the highest concentration of minerals. With thousands of miners working in the mountain every day, the danger of fatal accidents increases all the time. You need to put one ton in every wagon, one ton. Oh, Twenty wagons, they have to climb out today. There is the like, deposit. Some miners already work in the mountain for more than 20 years, which means they constantly breathe in a high concentration of dust. The mine is sick. That changes their voice and influences their ability to speak in a bad way with time. The voice is like this. <laughs> they have to cope. And the last the miner they speed of the blood. Now it's getting really narrow. Wow. And hot. All the minerals. Oh shit. Their mine is working. I just got five degrees warmer. And this man out there. <laughs> Hands work. He's doing everything by hand. This group of mineros asked for a voluntary that wants to help out for a bit and I was able to do their work for a few minutes. Just a couple moments earlier, they exploded some dynamite to dig deeper into the mountain. My task was to fill up a cart with rubble and stones lying all around as a result of the explosion. Go, go, my friend! Only two minutes of working in these conditions made me sweat to the bone. You are working for your foot now! <laughs> And this group stays in the mountain for 16 hours per shift. Go, go! Run, run, he said. Day by day. This is literally one of the hardest labors you can find on this planet. Go, go in the corner. Oh, what an experience. It's hard work. It's super, <laughs> it's super exhausting. With the altitude as well. Wow. Oh. But uh, yeah, a little bit of water into the next level of the mine, one further down, and then we have 600 meters to get out of it. So even deeper in the mountain. 70 meter descent. 70 meter descent, yeah. I don't know how to walk out. It's not fun with the camera. I didn't expect much of the connecting tunnel to the other mine, but this was next level, literally. Shit. Are you taking off? See? Only through crawling and watching every step carefully, I worked myself further, meter by meter. Twenty meters more, we go on the left. There is hole on the right. This hole has ten meters. Okay, chicos. Downhill through this, through this. Wow. <sighs> Here it's extremely dusty. My taste, like my mouth tastes like stone and metallic and dust and I don't know. Well, the ladder that I just walked down one minute ago just broke. Thing is, it feels like a tourist experience somehow because we're here with a group and other tourists, but this is actual, real. That is a place of work. People are living here, working here for sometimes 20 hours, 18 hours. In these conditions, it's insane. That's the mineral. This is bromine, with copper and tin, the main mineral mined here nowadays. Twenty-seventeen, 
I'm honestly so shocked right now. This group of four people, one was 23, the other one 20, the other one 17, and yet that last one 15. They're teenagers working in this mine, day in, day out, and they told us that when they get out after working, they were studying. Wow. Maybe you've been asking yourself why there are only men working in the mine. Well, not every socio consists only of men, but most do because of an ancient superstition that women bring bad luck. So they have to stay out of the tunnels and mostly take on traditional tasks associated with females throughout history. We're finally making our way out of the mine. We have like a 600 meter long tunnel until we reach daylight again. Oh wow. We're getting out of here. Oh. <laughs> we made it out. <laughs> wow. Wow. I don't have many words yet. But this was one of the craziest experiences of my life, that is for sure. Totally, we've been in for two and a half hours. And I'd say I didn't feel time passing. It could have been a day, it could have been half an hour. Cerro Rico determines the fate of Potosí and its people for almost 500 years. But how many more? Nowadays, the Cerro Rico is like an anthill. The mountain is expected to collapse within the next years. And what happens to the 19,000 miners working in and around the mountain until today when that inevitable moment comes? Well, to face the reality, it will be a catastrophe with hundreds if not even thousands of casualties. The mountain that eats men will do its name justice with or without collapsing. Just in 2021, over 50 miners died in the tunnels. Of course, my experience in the mountain was only a slight glimpse of the reality the miners have to face every single day. Still, I feel like I learned a lot from it and it changed my perspective on many different things. It taught me to take nothing for granted and to more appreciate the super privileged situation I'm living and I grew up in. It also made me even more realize that I want to tell meaningful and unique stories. Stories that may have a small impact on the people watching them. If you want to have a small impact as well, I put a link of a miners organization in the description below where you can directly donate and help the people in Potosi. Remember that just a small amount of money can already make a huge difference over there. If you enjoyed this little documentary, hit like and subscribe to help me make more videos like that in the future. With that said, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.